But, but um, does it do anything you mean, to improve you mean, is, understanding? Is reading comprehension, reading. Are you suggesting that reading comprehension could be improved because the students can hear what's being said? Is that what you're saying? Because if that's the case, if, if that, well, let's look at that as a possibility. That yeah. it, possibilities for some, some learners. The fact is, Marisa, a lot of students quite like the quietness and the isolation of being asked to read something in class. You know, or maybe read it with I a used class. to like it. Hmm? I yeah, I, to I, like I, I would too. You see, I, I, we, we, we imagine these yeah. days that, that maybe there should be something happening all the time. But That's the other thing. I don't what, remember what, understanding what I read. But no, but just, <laughs> just to say, what the, 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 second, the second thing that people say when they say, they say but if, people, if students don't read aloud in class, it goes very quiet. Yeah. Um, yes, well, that's because they're reading, you know. But the point is, I do understand that some students, some students find it easier to understand the meaning of the words of a written text if they hear it being spoken. But the answer to that, I think, is to have it on the record, have it professionally recorded. In other words, if, if the students want to listen and read at the same time, that should be possible. And if you like, it, it'd be nice if you could happen in a, a media resources room so they can choose, so they can choose to hear it or not. Because, you know, but, and also it may be a little bit fast if you're playing a professional recording. But the fact is, it does help sometimes um, to hear the words being said and to read them at the same time. I absolutely appreciate that. But not by other students in your class, unless they are very, very successful readers. And the fact is, the skill we're talking about is reading aloud from a text. Who does that? Great politicians like Obama can read aloud from a text. Some good religious people, you know, you go to a religious service of any kind and you can be very moved by somebody reading from a, a text, you know. These are very special skills done by professionals who spend a long time working on it, not by a 15-year-old girl in the classroom who's being asked to read in a foreign language. That's my main thought. As I say, there are lots and lots of ways that you can have an activity around the class involving somebody reading something off a piece of paper that somebody else has to react to. As I say, reading instruction. I've got lots of a lot of activities in my drama book involve writing something down, reading it to somebody else, asking them to react, you know. And it's nice. It's nice to read from notes. I think uh, if there's some kind of communicative um, purpose behind the reading, something aloud, as you... Yeah. Put in your drama activities. Yes, yes. That sounds I mean, great. But I have another well, question. Uh, you, well, honestly, um, as, as an, an example from my book is that you write on a piece of paper, I want to do something. I want to get my hair cut, right? And then you walk around the class and you say to somebody, I want to get my hair cut. And they, say, and they have to answer, I'm afraid you can't, right? So then you say, why? And they say, the hairdresser's is closed. Okay. Right? So that's fine. So you write that down on a piece of paper. You then walk to another person and say, I want to get my hair cut. They have to say, I'm afraid you can't. But they have to give you a different reason, okay. you see. So they say, the hairdresser is closed. No, look, that's no good. Read it from here. You see, I've already got that. They go, okay, um, because the hairdresser is ill. So they write down the hairdresser is ill, you see. And they walk around and they're reading from their text. They're showing it. Other people are reading. It's a very, very positive, active kind of reading. Great and, activity. Um, like, hmm? Great activity. That kind of thing. And I mean, the fact, I mean, I think, I don't know how much you want to go on to your second thing at the same time, but your second set of questions asks about reading texts, engaging young learners. And I yeah. think this is all connected, you know, because the fact of the matter is, I write course book material for a living. I hope people will continue to use books or, or its online um, version for a long time to come. Yeah. It's in my personal interest that they do. But at the same time, I recognize, especially in the 21st century, especially with all the technology around, the existence of a paper book in front of a student in the classroom is quite, you know, it's quite antiquated as a, as a, a situation. To be reading something from a paper book in a classroom is not like the, the rest of the lives of most of our young students. Okay. Can I ask, just ask you a question before we move to the second topic? Sorry, okay, sorry, which okay. Which is mm -hmm. quite connected. Um, what do you think the effect of reading aloud is on uh, helping the learners improve reading speed? Do you think it's connected in any way to slow reading? Because I've noticed a lot of learners 
or enables learners who kind of need to subvocalize to understand. It, well, th listen, if, if, you, if you can ask your students at the beginning, do you like yourself reading the text um, aloud or, or sotto voce when you read, then do it. Try, try to go into a place where you don't disturb the other students. But if you actually, and I'm not sure many people, you don't see many people on the underground reading aloud from their newspapers. You know, I'm not sure that many people do need that. But if there are, then let them say, well, just read it to yourself. But there's a, a man called Richard Day who lives in, Professor Richard Day, who lives in Hawaii. And he's a reading skills expert. And he has a little, a very simple idea that I really like a lot when it terms, comes to reading speed. He, he sits people down with a reading text. He said, right, read, and I'm going to stop you after two minutes or a minute. Depends on the level of the students. Let's say a minute. I want you to read and then stop after a minute. doesn't matter how much you read, just stop after a minute, okay? Stops after a minute, and, and he asks questions about the text from the whole class. He says, okay, read again now. This time, read for 90 seconds, okay? And they read for 90 seconds, and they stop. And he says it's fantastic because they go back to the beginning time and time again. It sounds like it might be boring. You mean we're visiting the, the text? Is a lot of it's, students need that. They yeah. need that kind of repetition in the same way that they need to repeat the sounds <laughs> that they don't pronounce well. You know. So there's, that's, a, that's a nice idea. If you get a chance to listen to Richard Day talking about reading skills, he's a reading fanatic. Yeah, and I learned well, a lot from just watching a, a one-hour talk of his in Japan. You know, really, really impressed by it. I never thought about things like that. You can imagine going back to the beginning of a text. You know, I've done this, but it's a text in a foreign language. It's not a thing you would do normally with a text of your own. Although I do sometimes, if I'm reading a, a, a theoretical academic text about English language teaching, I sometimes find I have to go back and start the paragraph again because um, I'm not good at reading academic stuff. Yeah, I mean, if you don't know the topic, it's very, very oh, normal. Well, well, I mean, I, academics, I, I've always <laughs> been a novel reader. I read novels more than anything, you know. So if, when it comes to anything, biographies or non-fiction or academic texts, it's a, uh, okay, I have to read this, you know. <laughs> well, engagement it was uh, the second question and the second topic we discussed, particularly with receptive text, things we hear or read. And a lot of people can make comments during that chat that published material tends to be a little bit repetitive or dry and it doesn't really engage uh, the students even before they read the text, mm. let mm. alone some of the topical selections. You know, the life of the centipede <laughs> may excite the teacher. <laughs> But uh, it may not excite the students. I'm fascinated with the life of a centipede. Well, you, you, hit the, you hit the net. I'm sorry, have you finished the question? Because I know, I, I know what I want to answer about this. Yeah, I think you should answer whatever you'd like to answer. No, the fact is, all right, the, the, the number one, uh, again, if, if you've been to see my current talk, which is 10 ways to get your students to do something, I have a little bit about publishers and what publishers think will engage students in reading texts. The fact of the matter is, it's impossible to be sure that any reading text will engage Everyone. all your students in the classroom if it's simply a piece of text on the page. And therefore, you have to find ways to bring it to life in some other way. And as an example, I find that you might know that there's some extraordinarily coincidental information about um, Abraham Lincoln and John Kennedy and how they were killed and everything. They were killed, both killed on a Friday. They were both killed by somebody who, who had three names that they used, John Wilkes Booth and uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. Um, they, they were both uh, succeeded by a president called Johnson. You know, so there's a lot of stuff. Yes. I, I thought, this is fascinating. How am I going to make it more fascinating? So what I do in my current talk is that I divide this information about Kennedy and Lincoln into ten factoids, if you like, ten numbered facts, okay? And I put the audience into teams of five, and then I say, I'm going to show you the first five um, factoids about these two presidents. And if you're number one in your group, you just look at number one. If you're number two, you just look at number two, etc. I'm then going to show you another five. If you're number one, you look at number six. If you're number two, you look at number seven, okay? And I'm going to give you seven seconds 